works with me. And if you're not out uh, doing that, people are writing checks and uh, helping support this campaign. Um, I'm a first-time candidate. If you don't know, some of you have heard me talk three or four or five times. But um, I'm a mom and a grandma and a teacher, and on March the 8th, I decided it was time to get a Democrat in the seat. There hasn't been a Democrat in the seat. Um, it's exciting. Um, I am staying true to my message. I mean, I live in a rural area. We need health care. We need Medicaid expansion. Uh, it's going to help our rural hospitals. It's going to ensure people, it's going to create jobs. I mean, it is time, and Stacy needs Democrats elected to get these bills passed. Yes. Um, so passionate about education. Education is our investment for the future. And this is the first year that our uh, QBE, the Quality Basic Education Formula, was fully funded in about a decade. Uh. Well, if I'm elected, and uh, I will be elected. <laughs> <laughs> Our school districts know at least that's the basic that they can expect is that to come to them each year. Um, rural Georgia has needs. There is poverty that exists out there. And uh, the schools in the rural areas, there is an equity. And I want to work to bring those levels up to where uh, there is fairness and equity and not inequity. So every kid comes to school on the level playing field. Yes. Those are some of the things I want to work on. Um, I love kids. I'm passionate about literacy and reading. We had a video done today, and uh, we actually, they asked me where I wanted it, and I said, I want it done in the library, in the kids um, yes. <laughs> section where all the little books and stuff are. Mm -hmm. And Jeremy came and did a testimonial. Thank yes. you. Um, but, you know, I need all of you, and I need all of your support. Um, this is not easy. It's right now we're in the final push, you know. It's 24-7. I've got Summer here, and where's Harry? Here. There you are. Okay. Um, they're working with me, non-paid volunteers, every single day. Um, go to ValerieHaskins.com. Uh, you know... I'll tell you one quick story and then I'll hand the mic off. But we were canvassing last week, Harry and I, and it was the end of the day, and um, I couldn't find Harry. I didn't know where he was. So I'm standing by my car just waiting, and this lady's out in the, um, her yard, and I had not canvassed her door. And she came up to me and she asked me what I was doing, and I started telling her about my campaign about how I am for diversity, building bridges, inclusiveness. Uh. And um, she almost had tears in her eyes. And she said, uh, she hugged me, and she said, can you wait five minutes? I'm going to run inside and write you a check. Uh. And I said, sure. <laughs> <laughs> she came out, she handed me a folded check, and I took it and I thanked her. I got in the car, and um, I handed it to Harry, yes. and I drove off, and he opened it. He said, Valerie, that check's for $100. Uh -huh. and, um, and she wrote on the bottom it, for those who make change happen. Yes. This is a lesson. $3 a month, $5 a month, or canvas forum, phone bank. Uh, we've got to get Democrats elected. This this is a very important time. Thank you very much. Yes. I am doing the work. I have a good staff. And I ask on November the 6th that you keep me at the, at the Muscogee.
several months ago as a committee of one. Mm -hmm. And he worked day in and day out as we went through the primary to make sure that Stacey Abrams became the Democratic nominee for governor. And he has not, he has been working nonstop. And so let's give Adam another round. Adam. I'm so excited and I'm delighted to be here with you all tonight. First of all, let me, let me say that Carolyn Hughley, state representative, is on the ballot. Check that box. Yes. <laughs> giving me the opportunity to serve, and I, I don't have an opponent, but I always want to thank you for the opportunity because I know the seat belongs to the people of Columbus and not to me, but I thank you for the opportunity to serve. I'm excited because we are about to make history. Yes. 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 And you can help make history by volunteering. And Adam is so fierce. Everybody has to canvas. He has given me my three canvas Saturdays. So y'all can come canvas with Carolyn if you'd like. Uh, and we're gonna I'm going to be sending some things out asking people to come canvas with Carolyn because we have got to engage voters. We have got to knock on those doors. And we have to be in a position where we not take no for an answer. we got to have everybody participate. we got to have everybody voting because we have got to be the change that we want to see. Come this November. Yes. Y'all think we can do it? Yeah. yeah. We are looking good all over the state. The polls are looking good for our for our nominee. Mm -hmm. She is working hard. I spoke to her today. Uh, I think she was in California. That's where in the world are you? She said, well, I'm, I'm in California. Uh, I'm working hard. She's working hard trying to raise money to reach voters because the message has to go out. Yes. Every candidate that you see, if Calvin Spire were here, he would say it takes coal to run a train and gold to run a campaign. Yes. So every candidate that you see needs a little bit of that gold. Yes. Because they have to get the message out. Yes. Uh, and we need, uh, as my father would say, we need a little bit of that elbow grease. Mm -hmm. We need to make calls. Uh, we need to engage our family and friends. And we have a Secretary of State that has taken 39,000 people mm. off the voter rolls here in Muskogee County. 39,000 people. Wow. And those people are inactive voters because they haven't been voted recently. And so part of our campaign, not necessarily here, but part of what's going to be happening in and around the area. So if you're in an organization that is nonpartisan, Get your organization to volunteer with a call to talk because they are going to be going out, knocking on those doors, and inviting those voters back because they got to register again mm. in order to participate. So we got people sitting out there that didn't vote in the last couple of elections, and if we get them excited and say, okay, I'm going to vote for your candidate, they may find out when they go that they're not eligible. Mm. So everybody... Everybody, everybody that you know, the first thing I want you to tell them to do is go to the Secretary of State My Voter page and check your status to make sure you are an active voter. Mm -hmm. yep. Because you can't take the field unless you are a player, right? Right. Yes. You can't vote unless you're act actively registered. So we want to make sure that everybody is actively registered. So do that at your church, at your organizations, wherever you are. Uh, and, and it's just as simple. Everybody got a smartphone. If you have a smartphone, you can go to Secretary of State's My Voter page, put your information in, and you can check it mm -hmm. right then to see what your status is. So we want to make sure that we don't have anybody that we know who think they're registered to vote and their status is not active. So right. do that for us. And then, of course, we have a few more days. Go to the Georgia Secretary of State. And, and there is my voter page. Mm -hmm. Or you can put in, go to your Google or whatever service that you use and just put in register to vote Georgia. And it will take you to that page and you can do it online. Mm -hmm. so, so whether you got the registration booth set up or not, as long as you got a smartphone, you can help somebody register to vote. Okay? Yep. We can do that? We can do that.
phone. You can register on your phone. Yes, ma'am. If you got a smartphone, if you can go to the Secretary of State, it's called My Voter Page. Yes. All right, she got it on her phone right now. All right. Okay. It's called MVP. It's www.mvp.sos.ga.gov. That's www.mvp.sos.ga.gov. The <laughs> simple thing to do is join the Secretary of State, go to the elections, and you can find it. There's mm -hmm. actually an app. Yeah, th this is an app. This, and it says Georgia SOS. Just yeah. go in your app store yeah. and say, and it's GA SOS. It's a red and white little icon. And we go. you can just go in there, put in your name and your birth date, and it'll tell you whether you're registered. And you can do it for anybody. Yes. You know, so you can set up a booth and just say, let's check. Mm -hmm. So that's all you need. Yeah. Smart right. Right. So when you come here, there are no excuses. If they say they don't know whether or not they're registered to vote, you can pull out your phone and, and determine whether they are right then. Mm -hmm. And if they haven't registered, you can help them register at that moment. Isn't that great? That's great. Yeah. All right. So we want to make sure we do that. Um, I am going over my time, but I do want to say to you that I have never been more encouraged than I am by the quality of candidates that we have in this year's uh, races. Uh, and we have a person who's running for Agriculture Commissioner. And I know in Columbus, we don't think a lot about Agriculture Commissioner because we don't look out and see the row crops and we don't see the farming operations going on. But agriculture is still the number one, number one, number one. Number one industry in the state of Georgia. Wow. So the person who holds that position is very important to the economic development of our state. And we have the Democratic nominee for Georgia Agriculture Commissioner here with us. Tonight. Yes. His name is Fred Swan. And we want to invite him up and let him tell us all about it.
doing all those sorts of things. And it left me with an appreciation, not just for the kind of hard work that goes into farming, but also for what agriculture can do for families and communities. We got an amazing amount of food out of that one acre of land. I mean, enough where, I mean, he wasn't really selling it. He had a little roadside booth at the end of his drive where he might sell some tomatoes to the neighborhood. But really, the vast majority, he was in a home bags of produce that he literally got out of his own field, sending home to his children and grandchildren. So think about how transformative agriculture is when it's applied to places that don't have food. Think about how transformative agriculture will be when we apply it to places that where the rural economy is suffering, where we're having rural hospital closures, where we have places that don't even know how they're going to make ends meet mm. to keep police fire, and all those simple services going because their tax bases are eroded. Yeah. So, a little bit more about my personal story. <clears throat> I uh, ended up starting off with the Democratic, local Democratic Party mm -hmm. and was eventually elected to the state committee from my county. I eventually became the 8th Congressional District Chair for the Democratic Party of Georgia from the state committee. Uh -huh. And the 8th District, for those of you who don't know, uh, it Borders the second, and I know some of y'all know where the second is, yeah. but the eighth is basically like mostly Macon area down to mostly Valdosta area. You can follow 75 down it for the most part. Yeah. Most of those counties, and there's 29, I think, in the district, there's, most of those counties have three things in common. They're rural, they're agricultural, and they're poor. Yeah. And now that I've been running this race, I knew that was an issue there. I figured it might be throughout the state. I can confirm for you that's pretty much the way things go around the state. Those three things go together more than should be allowed for a place in which, as she pointed out, we are the leading, our leading industry is agriculture. And yet our agricultural community are some of our poorest. Mm. Nobody can give me a real good answer as to why. Mm. Now, I got my own answers. I don't think they're too good. Most of them have to do with big ag pushing small family farms out. Yes. And so that's why that those two things are why I jumped into this race. That's why I said we cannot have this race not run by a Democrat. We can no longer allow a Republican to sit in that race and continue to be a lobbyist on the inside for the big ag corporations while small communities are crumbling and dying. While there are food insecure areas, places that we call food deserts, mm -hmm. exist okay. throughout the state, not just in urban areas, but in rural agricultural areas. There are places where people can't get fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, or fresh meats. There are whole counties that do not have a supermarket. Mm -hmm. Period. Wow. That's All they got is a Dollar General and maybe a family dollar, some fast food. Gas station. And gas station. That's it. Oh. <clears throat> right, exactly. Yeah. That's that. So I want to change that. And this is my plan for changing. I want to invest in, revitalize, protect, and expand small family farms throughout the state. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. years, they were the backbone of communities. They were the essential of the tax base. Mm -hmm. So when small family farms go away, and now communities can't make ends meet, and rural hospitals are closing, and they keep scratching their heads, I wonder why this is happening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's go back to the root. Let's go back to the basics. And mm -hmm. that's one of the things. So the people keep asking, well, Fred, how are you going to create all these small farms? Where are you going to get all this demand? Well, we got all these food deserts, right? we got all these places that people can't get fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, and fresh meats. Why don't we work to create more markets, yes. more farmers markets in mm. places that don't have them now, more pop-up markets, <clears throat> more supermarkets? How about we create areas where we have tax abatement zones where if you sell a certain amount of local food that's mm -hmm. locally sourced, then you'll get a certain tax break, and that makes it economically viable for you to come back in. Right. Why can't we do these things? Mm -hmm. And here's the thing. We currently can't do these things because we have 
a Republican-controlled legislature, which controls our taxes, which is why we need to get Valerie into office so that she can help get yes. some of this stuff through. <laughs> yes. Here's the thing. Stacey Abrams is an amazing candidate. She's probably a once-in-a-generation candidate coming through Georgia. And she's going to do great things for us as our governor. But she can't do it alone, as, right. as Valerie pointed out. Right. She, even Superman needs the Justice League. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So she, they need us. They need us all in their pockets and and making these kind of changes. Now I've got a whole slate of a platform that I would love to share with you about animal rights, about about the environment, about Mental all, health. several things that people don't even think about. Well, the Agricultural Water does that. Yes, it does. It impacts you, and I promise you, you, every person in this room every single day. And I would love to talk with you about it while I'm here. I would also love if you guys would go to my website, www.swanforga, that's S-W-A-N-N-F-O-R-G-A dot com, and look at my bio, look at my platform. It's all there. We actually just recently updated it. Look at everything. <clears throat> look at, and, and, and you know what? If you decide to cruise by and and place a donation, I definitely will thank you for that as well. <laughs> you can also go and check out my Facebook, facebook.com backslash swan for GA. We post there just about every day something. Either I've been on the road and we're talking about events I've done, or we're, talking, we're sharing articles talking about the issues, or talking about the various things on the platform that we want to accomplish. And you can go there, and if you send me a message, I'll probably answer it because – it's just me and a couple others on my staff. You know, we're kind of a small operation. So mm -hmm. most of the things I do, I do personally answer people's questions. I actually got a question on the way down here from someone who calls herself a staunch conservative from Blue Ridge. Now, those who don't know, Blue Ridge is North Georgia Mountain. It's a mountain folk. Mm -hmm. Who said she wanted to know why she should cross over and vote for a Democrat. And she said that based on things I'm reading, I'm finding favorable. Mm-hmm. Okay. The message that these people is getting out, and it's getting, it's touching people, and they're saying we're we're fed up, we've had it, it's time for a change. And guess what? This room being filled like this—that's why I pointed out at the beginning—that is indicative of the change that is coming. You are going to make the change. We're just going to be the ones standing there with the work you're going to do. So really, thank you already for what you have done. Yes. Thank you for what you will do in these next yes. 60 days. We are going to turn Georgia blue. blue. We are going to...
this will be during the day. Uh, from 11 to 12 30. Now the true blue gala is on what day? September the 18th. September the 18th is the true blue gala. And our speaker is going to be who? Stacey Abrams. Stacey Abrams. We need everybody to come out and support our true blue gala and uh, support the wonderful gubernatorial candidate that we have. It is going to be exciting. And you don't want to miss it. And where can they get tickets for this? Right here. All right. So make sure make sure you get your ticket and uh, come out and support our local committee mm -hmm. because our local committee supports all of our candidates, and our local committee is what helps make this operation go. So I want to thank all of those who are here that are part of our local committee because they're part of our unsung hero team, and so I don't want to leave today without. Thank you, them, Adam, because they're so very important. Uh, and each and every one of you, if you have not signed up to volunteer, mm -hmm. don't make me call you when I come to the campus. <laughs> so if you have not signed up to volunteer, please right don't there. leave without signing up Right where volunteer. Laura is. You can go knock on doors, or you can make phone calls, or you can help out here in the office. There's something for everybody to do. So.